Hi everyone, I'm Donna Louise and welcome to my YouTube channel for the love of puzzles. Today's going to be a bit different of a video. I actually have, look, handwritten notes and I will be referring to them during this video because I'm going to share with you, I believe it's 15 strategies that I have when it comes to building a large piece count jigsaw puzzle. I know many of you were interested in this because I just recently completed this lovely Clementoni 6,000 piece downtown jigsaw puzzle by Chiro Makkedi. And I have a bit of experience doing large piece count puzzles, so I thought I would share my strategies with everyone. Now I have to start by saying that these strategies are not necessarily to make you puzzle faster. Although having good strategies will probably naturally make you puzzle faster, but the point of this video is not to speed puzzle. The point is to make the jigsaw puzzling experience more enjoyable. I know many of you do 500 or 1000 piece jigsaw puzzles and you're comfortable there and it's a bit overwhelming to move to a larger piece count puzzle. So I'm hoping these strategies will help you and make the whole experience more enjoyable, not make it more challenging. If you want to make things more challenging for you, there's ways to do that, but that's not what I'm going to talk about here. Let's puzzle smarter and more enjoyable, not more challenging. So my first tip is that go in increments. If the largest jigsaw puzzle you've ever done is a thousand piece, then go to a 2000 piece. If you really enjoyed that, then move to a 3000 piece. I feel if you've done a 3000 piece, you might be able then to jump perhaps to a five or a 6,000 piece jigsaw puzzle, but don't go from having done only thousand piece jigsaw puzzles and try to do a 6,000 piece. Go in increments. And especially if you've only done 500 piece jigsaw puzzles, do a couple of thousand pieces first because it's not linear. A 500 piece to a 1000 piece, it's not just double the time. It kind of increases, you know, a bit significantly. And by the time you get to a 6000 piece, 9000 piece or so forth, it's a lot. So go in slow increments. My second tip is that pick a brand that you know and you love and you enjoy, that you've done 500 or 1,000 piece jigsaw puzzles from them, you've enjoyed that, and most likely you will enjoy the quality of a little larger piece puzzle. Learn from my mistake. I did not do any Educa jigsaw puzzles before buying the 42,000 piece around the world one. And to be honest, I've heard many comments from you all that even their 500 and 1000 piece jigsaw puzzles are very crumbly, very loose fitting. If I would have done a 500 piece or a 1000 piece Educa jigsaw puzzle, I most likely would not have purchased that 42,000 piece one. So make sure it's a brand that you're familiar with, you enjoy. And honestly, there's only so many brands that make really large jigsaw puzzles like Clementoni, Robinsberger, let's see, Graphica, Educa. So there's not that much variety, but make sure it's at least a brand that you enjoy doing. Third, the logistics of doing a larger piece count in Jigsaw Puzzle. You need the space to put it somewhere, especially as they get bigger and bigger and bigger. Can you leave the Jigsaw Puzzle out for maybe weeks or months at a time? Are you able to cover it? Do you have pets? Will they interfere with the puzzle? Are you able to get around all sides of the jigsaw puzzle? For this one, I can get around most of the jigsaw puzzle, but I end up doing a lot of reaching. It's not good on your back. Are you able to maybe do it in sections and put some away? Do you have somewhere to store it when you're not doing the jigsaw puzzle? I typically build them on boards, boards that I can separate and move around. So the logistics of doing a larger piece count jigsaw puzzle come into play here. You have to make, make sure you have the room to place the jigsaw puzzle and that it's okay to be out and about and not get destroyed by our four footed little furry friends that enjoy coming along and puzzling with us. I'm very lucky that the dogs leave my jigsaw puzzles alone. We don't have cats, but I see many a photo of cats on top of a jigsaw puzzle and the last thing you want is if you put the time and money and effort in doing a large piece count puzzle and you get down to the end and you're missing a piece or two, that would drive me crazy. So make sure you have the room for it. Make, try to make sure you can access all sides. Can you cover it? 
Can you leave it out for long periods of time? Do you have somewhere to store it? So just some logistics about doing a large piece jigsaw puzzle. I'm probably gonna lose count here, but I believe I'm at four. Make sure it's an image and a style that you enjoy doing and that you've done previously a lot. For example, I do a lot of illustrations with nice clean lines, distinct sections. I'm not one for photographs. I don't do landscapes or flowers. So I would suggest that you do something that you're familiar with, that you enjoy doing. Don't do an image that's completely different from anything else that you've ever done. You're setting yourself potentially up for failure that you won't really enjoy the jigsaw puzzle. So stick with what you know. So five, if possible, try to do some research on the puzzle you wanna buy. There's lots of Facebook groups, on Instagram. Ask people, have they done the jigsaw puzzle? Did they enjoy it? Did it come in multiple bags? Did it have a repeat cut pattern? Find out the information if you can. Ask the questions. A lot of these large count jigsaw puzzles, a lot of people have done before. So you may be able to find out some tips and tricks about doing the jigsaw puzzle. So ask, you might find something useful and helpful, especially if it comes in multiple bags and has a repeat cut pattern. That's really good information to know. I want to explain the difference between a false fit and a perfect false fit. Those are terms I use before telling you my next tip. Um, basically, imagine you build a jigsaw puzzle, any size, you put a, play, a piece in place, you think it fits, but then when you come to try to build pieces around it, nothing quite fits, and you realize that initial piece you placed didn't actually go there. That's a false fit. It almost went, it looked like it kind of went, but on further inspection, you look, nah, it doesn't really go there. That's a false fit. That can happen with any jigsaw puzzle, and it can also happen if we're not paying close enough attention. Sometimes they're just cut so close, it almost looks like it fits, but it doesn't. A perfect false fit happens when you have a jigsaw puzzle that is cut with the same pattern multiple times. And so for example, let me use this downtown Clementoni jigsaw puzzle. 6,000 pieces, it has the same pattern cut in it to four times. That means each piece can perfectly fit in four different places. Now, obviously, I'm not gonna take a piece from the building and put it in the sky. However, there's lots of sky, lots of blue. There is a chance that I could take one blue piece and put it in the exact same correct spot, but on the other side. And when you step back and you look at your jigsaw puzzle, it looks a bit off. Something's not working because the shading is not correct. And in fact, I ended up with eight perfect false fits when I did this jigsaw puzzle. I placed the piece, it fit perfectly. Pieces around it all fit perfectly. I walked away thinking, yep, that piece went there. And as I kept building the jigsaw puzzle, looking at it from different angles, I could tell the coloration wasn't quite right. So this comes to my next tip, and I think I've lost track. I think I'm at number six right now. I do not suggest, and I will never suggest, mixing bags. If a jigsaw puzzle comes in multiple bags, chances are there's a repeat cut pattern. And you will complicate things if you mix the bags, and therefore you will increase your chances of having perfect false fits. I believe most retailers, most vendors, I should say manufacturers, up to 6,000 pieces, I believe it comes in one bag. I believe after 6,000 pieces, they may come start coming in multiple bags. However, what's funny is Pintu, they have repeat cut patterns, but they tend to produce their puzzles in multiple bags. That at least gives you the option, if you want to mix the bags, you could, but if it comes all in one big bag and it has repeat cuts, you're not given the option, you could potentially end up with perfect false fits. So to make the puzzling experience more enjoyable, especially if you're just starting out doing bigger and bigger, larger piece count jigsaw puzzles, I suggest that you do not mix the bags. Seven, before you start puzzling, get some supplies ready. For example, do you have sorting trays? Do you have containers? Do you have empty box lids or bottoms from other jigsaw puzzles that you've done? Round them all up because you'll use them to hold the different puzzle pieces as you're sorting and puzzling. And you need somewhere to store them while you're not using them. So I pulled out one time a bunch of resealable bags 
put pieces in them. I thought that was great. And I just keep them in my pile of puzzle accessor accessories. So they haven't gone to landfill and they haven't gone to waste and I've used them multiple, multiple times. So just find means to store and sort your pieces in trays, empty boxes, anything that you can have, um, resealable containers. Yeah, just get a hold of a couple because you'll need them. Now we start getting into the fun stuff. And I know some people may not agree with all my strategies and that's fine, but this is how I approach things. I now, let's get into the puzzling. I do a full detailed sort, every single piece. I go through every single piece and I try to sort them as best as possible in as many small piles as possible. I've written down a list here of things I look for when I'm sorting. And so I'll go through them and it really is image dependent. You can see these two images right here. A lot more sorting can be done on this one than that can be done on this one. And for example, I did this jigsaw puzzle 2000 pieces. This one's called Wisdom Whale and it's from Robert Lynn Nelson is the artist. I would not want to do this in much bigger piece count. It would be very difficult because they're very similar colors. Whereas this one, there was a lot of areas that I could sub sort. So let's just go down the list. First of all, sorting pieces per 1,000 piece, as you get bigger and bigger and bigger, you could estimate anywhere between 20 minutes to an hour, maybe even slightly over an hour in sorting time. It's part of the process, it's part of the puzzling experience. Take breaks, do it over multiple days. You're in no rush. Hopefully you're not in no rush to get the puzzle done, just enjoy it. So. The first thing, as you're sorting, I pile all the border pieces together. Then I like to look at what I call transition pieces, especially if there's a skyline. So the transition, have I been filming this entire video with this box upside down? Let's just keep going. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Oh goodness, okay. The next thing I like to try to sort are transition pieces. For example, in the downtown Clementoni, any piece that really transitions from one color to the next or one section of the puzzle to the next, I tend to do it for the skyline. So any piece that would have part of a building or part of a flag or something and part of blue sky. To me, that's a transition piece. I like to sort them separately because then I like to be able to build a skyline. For example, if there's water, there'd be transition pieces between the land and the water. I like to subsort them as well. That's just something that I do. I think I've picked that up more from speed puzzling, but I think it can be helpful when it comes to larger piece jigsaw puzzles as well. So after that, I tend to sort pieces that are the same color, same texture, sky, water, grass. And if possible, while I'm sorting them, I try to actually subsort by gradient. So for example, if you're sorting sky pieces, go from lighter to darker. And I usually use a box top if it's a section of the jigsaw puzzle with a lot of pieces. And as I'm putting the pieces in the box, I just simply put them from lighter to darker. I, you know, it's not perfect, but it helps. So yeah, try to sort by color, by texture as much as possible. And if you can do a gradient sort. Next, when I'm sorting, I try to pick the smallest things to sort out. So for example, if I were to sort the building pieces and just say, I'm gonna make a pile with all the building pieces, it'd be a huge pile. So what I did is I said, well, I'm gonna sort out all the greenery. So even if the greenery had part of the building on it, it went in the greenery pile. I'm gonna sort out all the red pieces part of the building. Even if it had gold pieces on, I was going to sort them separately. So instead of making one large pile of all the building pieces, I made smaller piles as much as possible. I focused on the things that appear the least or the less often in the image and sort them into piles. You may need to change up your sorting slightly as you go. I noticed for downtown, at first I did actually start sorting those red 
building pieces in with the rest of the pieces and I thought, oh, that's not a good strategy. I should subsort them out. So it's okay to change up your sorting if you clue in and realize, oh, this is actually a piece that belongs to somewhere else. I also went through back some of the piles that I had and pulled out pieces and put them together because I was, I realized I was sorting pieces from a certain building incorrectly. And that's all right. You may need to change up your sorting process, your sorting strategy as you're doing it, and that's okay. And the thing to note is that no sort will be perfect. You're gonna have missed sorts, you're gonna have pieces in the wrong pile, and that's okay. But taking the time to look at each piece try to place it as best as possible into an appropriate pile will help you because then when you're assembling the jigsaw puzzle you'll be like oh i remember i had a bunch of these types of pieces with say this type of roofing on it i put them in that pile i should go find them there so it's okay if the sorting is not perfect but i do suggest you take your time enjoy it look at each piece try to find a good home for it I prefer to have a lot of small piles rather than big ones. Now, obviously you tend to end up with one larger pile if there is such a thing as sky or lots of grass or lots of water. So I try to do as many small piles as possible and hopefully only have a few larger piles to deal with. So I think I'm up to number nine because those were all tips on how to sort. While I'm sorting, because it can be a bit boring, before I start sorting, I look at the image and I try to pick out a few things, a few very distinct things that pop that I can try to build as I'm sorting. So for the downtown, I picked out those white birds. I thought, hey, I should be able to hopefully find those pieces and build them as I sort. I also picked out some of the roof because they had a the distinct kind of texture on them. And I thought I would try to build some of the roofs as I went. So I encourage you to try to find two or three things, smaller things to try to build as you're sorting pieces. So then when you're done the sort, you'll be like, oh, look, I already have a few pieces assembled. And during the sort, you just don't feel like you're making just piles. You actually can see some work coming together. So if it's possible, try to build a few little things as you're sorting. Number 10, I do not build the border until it's necessary, especially on a very large piece count jigsaw puzzle, it gets in the way. This one is barely fitting on my boards and you're just knocking it, it catches on your sleeves. So I tend to build only the border as I'm working on that area. I leave it a lot of times to the end. In fact, when I did get to the sky, I finished and I built the blue border up here, but as I was building the pieces, I kept knocking it. So don't think you have to build the border right away. Only build the border as you get to that section of the jigsaw puzzle. It could get in your way and drive you crazy, especially the larger that the jigsaw puzzle gets. So when I start building the jigsaw puzzle, I work from the smallest piles to the bigger ones. For example, for downtown, I did a lot of the small things. I did like the balloons, the hot air balloons. You know, I did the greenery, I did the sails, I did the flags. I started with my smallest piles and as I was finding pieces that didn't belong, I resorted them. And then sometimes I would go, oh, I think I put some pieces in that pile over there that actually belong to this. So I might, pick through those other piles, see if I could find more pieces. But I tend to go from smallest to largest. And that way, after you've done all that sorting, it just feels like things are coming together. You're able to build a couple of small things. And it, it really starts coming together quickly though, once you get going, if you've spent the time to do a nice full complete sort. I think I'm at tip number 12. This is especially helpful when it's a really large jigsaw puzzle. I tend to build on top of cardstock closer to me and then try to slide the sections into position on the table or on the boards. I try to avoid leaning and I will admit I wasn't great <laughs> for this jigsaw puzzle because the building is so big and takes most of the jigsaw puzzle up. I did do a lot of leaning, but for the Educa around the world, I am able to build a lot of sections on cardstock and then slide them into place. So use something a bit sturdy, build on top of it, then walk around, try to slide it off. Even if it falls apart a little bit, it's okay. And try to position it 
afterwards. Sometimes it's just difficult to build upside down or sideways or reaching. So try to build closer to you on cardstock and then slide it into position once it's done. Number 13. If you know that the jigsaw puzzle has a repeat cut pattern, or if you figure it out that it has a repeat cut pattern, use it to your advantage, especially if you get stuck. So for this one downtown, I knew there was a repeat cut pattern and I used it for the sky. And I actually built on top of the repeat cut pattern. So for example, I knew that lower corner there, if I rotated it, it would mimic exactly the piece cuts that belong in this upper corner with all that dark sky. So I actually focused on building on top of the puzzle down there. And once I got quite a few pieces assembled, I slid them into place. So use the repeat cut pattern to your advantage and try actually building on top of it. Because if you're trying to build the pieces over there and you're walking over there and you're like, okay, now I need a two prong adjacent. And then you're going back there and back there. It's much easier to build on top of it, especially because you can actually see not just what type of piece you're looking for, but maybe the prong shape. Is it elongated? Is it wide? It's very helpful. So use that to your advantage. 14. If you're getting to the point now where you're getting to some of your larger piles of pieces, see if you can then further subsort them. Because after you've built quite a bit of the jigsaw puzzle, you might realize, oh, you know, I realized this texture was actually lower in the sky as opposed to this texture that was higher in the sky. So perhaps it would be a good time to take a break, go through that large pile of pieces and see if you can subsort them better. You know, especially if you had different types of trees and you go, well, these were more leafy trees where these were more pine trees. I can distinguish that. I can separate them out. So if you have to grab those large piles and try to subsort them smaller, just then it makes it less daunting as opposed to trying to grab a pile of 500 pieces, you may end up making four smaller piles to have to work with. 15. Once you get to those large areas of solid colors or repeat patterns like sky, water, trees, you may have to sort by piece shape. And that will help greatly. Use puzzle trays. I just have pieces of foam board. It can take time, but it's part of the puzzling experience. You can take a break, sort your pieces by piece shape. And then, especially if you're using the repeat cut pattern and you go, oh, I need a castle piece, a three prong piece. Then you go to your subsorted castle pieces and try to find the one that you need. I like to use what I call the Cinderella shoe method. Actually, I did not coin that term. And I'm sorry, I forget who told me that term. But basically, I will take a piece that's already in the jigsaw puzzle, pull it out, and because it's a repeat cut pattern, I'll go, oh, I'm looking for a castle piece next to it. I will take that piece and try it on all the castle pieces that I've subsorted until I find the one that fits and boom, done. So if you have to, if you get stuck, stop, sort the pieces by piece shape. It'll be, it'll be worth the time and effort in the end because it'll be very helpful, especially for things, sky, water, repeat colors, repeat patterns. It's very, very helpful. Now this I'm gonna say is not a strategy or else it would be number 16, but it's not. I wanna say that it's a license, a license that I gift to you all, unlimited use, lifetime use. If you are not enjoying the jigsaw puzzle, if you're not having fun, it's okay to put it away, maybe pull it out in a month or two, but it's also okay to go, you know what? I've done enough, I enjoy it, I don't really want to complete the sky. I don't want to deal with all these blue pieces. I've had fun. I'm going to pick it up and put it away, sell it, pass it on to someone else. It's okay. If you're not having fun, don't force yourself to do the jigsaw puzzle because this is all for the love of puzzles. There are so many beautiful jigsaw puzzles out there to do. And I've done it. There, you've seen me on the channel. There was that 500 piece, what was it? Optical illusion puzzle. Now nah, I was like, nope, <laughs> stopped. And then there was that 6,000 piece Graphica vintage travel puzzle, too much brown. I tried, picked it up, nah. I would rather you enjoy what you're doing and once you've completed as much as you wanna do on the jigsaw puzzle and you're happy and content, it's okay to pick it up. Don't let yourself get frustrated or annoyed. Some people like putting them away for a while and pulling them back out 
and maybe you know you'll regain your interest and that's good too either way just have fun and i feel like i have to verbalize that to people in fact if you've watched my videos you'll see i'm struggling with educas around the world struggling in the sense that i'm not really enjoying it and so i'm delaying opening the next bag I know I can do it physically. I know I'm capable of doing, you know, they come in 6,000 pieces in a bag and I'll pull it out once I'm ready and I'm motivated to do so. But I'm not gonna force myself because it's not enjoyable for me and it won't be an enjoyable video for you all to watch either. So have fun puzzling. And it's okay to not finish a puzzle, no matter the size, 500, 5,000, 50,000. Just have fun. So there you go. I hope my strategies are helpful. I hope that people who are hoping to try their first 2000 piece might find these helpful and interesting and you'll find a 2000 piece jigsaw puzzle that you enjoy and you'll try to do it. A lot of the large, large jigsaw puzzles like the 54,000 piece Graphica one came in 27 bags of 2000 pieces. So overall it wasn't too overwhelming. The largest single bag piece count I've ever done is 6000 pieces absolutely enjoyed this one the downtown clementoni not enjoying the educa around the world so much that's six thousand pieces per bag seven bags i've done two so far but you know you just gotta try it might be for you it might not be for you it's okay if all you want to do is 500 piece jigsaw puzzles it's okay if all you want to do are large count jigsaw puzzles do what you enjoy and have fun i do have an idea I need you to leave a comment below. And if there's enough interest that I'm willing to do this, would you like to see a series, maybe a puzzle along series where I buy, let's start with a 2000 piece jigsaw puzzle. I think there's some cute ones like Robin's Burger has the If Fish Could Walk. And I think there's one called Novel Avenue, for example. If I were to buy that jigsaw puzzle, and following my strategies as best as possible that works with the jigsaw puzzle, I would make small videos. And say in the first video, I would talk about my setup and do the sorting and then release it. And you could watch the video and then you would go and kind of mimic or follow what I've done in the video so you can puzzle along with me, for example. And then I would release the videos maybe closer together, but give you enough time to try to finish each section and basically a bit of a walkthrough where we do the same puzzle together and some people may get the puzzle and do it differently that's fine but this would be more geared to those people who've never done say a 2000 piece jigsaw puzzle and it's still kind of overwhelming but they would like to try one so perhaps we could do one together a series of videos where you puzzle along with me as we complete a larger piece count jigsaw puzzle starting with probably a 2000 piece what do you think? Is that something you would be interested in doing? Would you puzzle with me? Um, do you have no interest at all? Leave your comments below. I'd really like to know. Well, there you go. I am not going to refilm that whole starting part where the box was upside down. I can't believe I had it that way. This is the joy of trying to film solo by yourself and trying to get everything coordinated and worked out correctly but I hope you really enjoyed this. I did try to take a lot of time and effort in writing down my thoughts and ideas and thinking about the large piece count puzzles I've done in the past and the order and the approach that I have to them. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. For the love of puzzles, I hope you enjoy my videos. Please consider subscribing and until next time, ciao.